Welcome back to What's the 411 Sports. Well, Keisha, we go to the gridiron, and I ask you about our New York Giants. They made a lot of moves here in the offseason so far, and of course they improved in many ways in the draft. When the season finally does roll around, Keisha, in September, who will be the team to beat in the NFC East? Mike, I begrudgingly give the edge to the Dallas Cowboys. I just think because of that offensive line, it really gives them an advantage. And you've got Dak Prescott coming in for his second year, as well as Ezekiel Elliott. They've got a season under their wings, so um, I think they're they're not going to they're going to be easier to figure out now. His team teams have had time to study and prepare for them, and they did lose some members of their defensive team, so you can still score on them so i give them the edge over the giants um who did not really address their need at offensive line but they gave eli a shiny new target and brandon marshall so i i think that it's going to be a battle well fortunately they square off in week one too so we're going to see right from the get-go who really has the edge in the division i agree with you though keisha the cowboys after a great season last year i know they lost early in the playoffs but this is a team that with dak prescott now at the helm, they're set really what for the next eight, ten years with the quarterback at the quarterback position. So it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. But look, if you're a Giants fan after making the playoffs, losing to Green Bay last season, I think that there's a lot to be excited about once the 2017 season finally does roll around. Well, Keisha, we talk now about some basketball. Congratulations to Rondé Hollis Jefferson, his alma mater, the Chester Community Charter School, named its gym after Rondé Hollis Jefferson. So that's some good news for the Nets. And we talk about the Nets. What can they do to upgrade a roster that has really struggled over the course of the last couple seasons? And just quickly, as we go over the river and talk about the Knicks, what can they do? And Phil Jackson, of course, as the general manager, what are some of the names that he should be thinking about as the Knicks prepare for the NBA draft? Well, I'd like to extend my congratulations to Rondé Hollis Jefferson. That's quite an honor. And in terms of building the Nets roster, I think they're going to need some scoring. They did trade Bo Bojan Bogdanovic. Boya, as they used to call him. Um, so I think they need to replace some of that scoring. And, I mean, I really like what they have so far. It's just a matter of fine-tuning it because there were little periods of time, flashes of of. I don't know, brilliance or um, flashes of potential that if with another season under the belt with uh, Coach Kenny Atkinson and really tighten up on a defense, because I think the defense is really where they struggled a lot. They do have some scorers. And you've got some, you got Trevor Booker, Robin Lopez, is, I mean, sorry, Brooke Lopez is coming back. So um, I think that they need some shooting. I hear word on the street is that the Knicks and the Nets have their eye on J.J. Redick. And you know why that is of interest to me. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, he would be a great, I mean, great addition. He can shoot lights out of the of the gym. Uh, the, the, net, the Nets also have interest in a foreign player by the name of Milos Teodosi. So we'll see um, if he comes over. And the Knicks, they're saying that... Um, they're looking at Malik Monk out of Kentucky, who is a combo guard who can possibly slide over and play the point guard position, which you're going to need because I don't know what the deal will be with Derrick Rose at you know when it's time for free agency. And even if Rose does stay, they would need a viable backup. One, because Derrick Rose is getting a little older and he's injury prone, so they will need somebody to, to fill in for them. And then, I mean, if you're going to get rid of Melo, Maybe you find the future mellow in the draft. <laughs> Absolutely. And as you point out, I'll start with the Knicks. You know, as far as the names that they should be looking at, a lot of them are people that we might be unfamiliar with. As you talked about the guy from France who Phil Jackson could be coveting. And again, it all comes down to how they handle the whole Carmelo Anthony situation. Because right now, I think the Knicks are in the worst situation that they've been in a long time. So hopefully it will get better. And in terms of the Nets, you know, I've, I've heard that Justin Holiday is a name that's been floated around. I think it comes down to this guy, Jeremy Lin. Look, if he's healthy and he can give them some minutes and play next season, there's no question that this team will drastically improve. And I'll end with this. Jeremy Lin has said that some of his former teammates... 
four or five former teammates have actually reached out to him and talked about an interest in playing for Brooklyn. So hopefully Ooh. there will be a sense of optimism for the Nets fans as they head into this offseason. Well, you can only find out what happens as we get towards the, the end of this regular, uh, well, the NBA Finals, which are just right around the corner. Yeah, and he's playing with some really uh, great players. So ooh, let's see. Well, don't go away because when we come back, you'll find out who's going on the bench.